Bonjour, bonjour Berlin. Excuse for excuse my French. Um, actually, it's going to be the first time I'm giving this uh, talk in English, and the second time outside of France. Um, my last name is Huber because my great grandfather um, was uh, German, and um, the little German I remember uh, is actually ish, aber nur fünf Jahre auf Deutsch sprechen. So don't worry, I'll be speaking English. Um, I'm really happy to be with you today, and actually, uh, I really am because um, when I was at the um, uh, at the airport, whoops, we we lost the. Connection, let me turn it off and on again. When I was at the, the airport, um, actually the, the security guy looked at my uh, computer, looked at the wires, the breadboards, and he looked at me. He looked at the wires, he looked at me. Uh, I was just like, I really need to be at this conference with my computer. <laughs> and then he said, what is that? Um, I uh, tried to explain, it was an 8-bit computer, you know, you can add numbers and stuff, and I think he didn't understand everything, but I, I know that he just, um, he just looked at me, smiled, and say, um, congratulations, just go. <laughs> like, okay, so that, that worked out, uh, thankfully. Um, I'm a passionate person, and I'm, uh, I really want to, when I do something, I really want to do it all the way. Uh, and actually, I, I, I wanted to build my own house, and my, my dad said, okay, wooden house, and my dad said, okay, great, um, let's do that. So I, I remember thinking about what I wanted, and you know, like, thinking about my veranda, for instance, and I remember I already created in my mind. I was there thinking about it, and I was there walking in it. So I, for me, I created it in my mind, in, in the first place. And then I had to like go to the store, hardware store, buy the wood and everything, and create it a second time. And that was expensive, that was hard, um, that was long. And uh, the great thing I realized is that in IT, we have this capacity that this time between the first creation in our mind um, and the second is really short. You've got a friend that says, I've got a problem, I've got an issue with this. Uh, I was like, okay, let me see. And then uh, usually at night, <laughs> you, uh, you, you hack, and then by morning you have something, and it's like, oh, great. And you're just like, yeah, I added value, like a little bit of value in this word, and I helped someone. And uh, one thing I liked from Richard Feynman was his pedagogy and everything, and he said, what I cannot create, I don't understand. And that's one thing I really wanted to do, because I've got three girls, and one of them I really wanted like, to, to, to go to her school. And I usually go to school and teach and, and try to... Um, tell kids about electronics and stuff, and um, at some point, coming back from one of those uh, Arduino sessions and stuff, uh, I asked my daughter, do you really understand what a computer is, and how does it work? And she said, well, uh, yeah, what, what is it? And she said, well, there's a keyboard, there's a screen, and there's like YouTube and stuff. I was like, okay, there's work there. <laughs> so I said, well, can I explain to her, but then can I um, understand myself, and can I actually, like maybe the best way would be to create it, can I create it? So I I happen to be on this journey to try to understand and teach kids. So Jour. one of the things, maybe you remember this from uh, Les Visiteurs, this French movie Nuit. where they Jour. come back from time Nuit. and uh, he's playing with What's the lights day and night. Yeah, it's, it's annoying. And um, I use this to explain like no electricity, electricity, zeros and ones, um, zero volt, five volts, okay? And then I try to explain the transistors and stuff. I did many like, different little projects like this, help yeah, my daughter to solder and do stuff. And um, one thing I, I, I really tried, I said, well, can I really build this computer, like to really understand? So let's go from what my daughter said. She said a keyboard and a, a screen. Okay, so there's electricity, zeros and ones. There's the input, the screen is the output, but what's in between? Can I do something with this? So for the input, I'll use switches, uh, little dip switches. Uh, that's like a keyboard, actually. It's, it's just sending like, a, Five volts. So it's sending a signal. Uh, I already created like the the keyboard driver, a serial driver. It it, it works on one breadboard. Maybe one time I can show you. It's it's, it's really simple. And um, and LEDs because LEDs are great. And if you add um, a numerical, I want at least one numerical like uh, um, component because uh, I want it to look like uh, Back to the Future. Um, so I started with the transistor and. Um, 
I love the Lego analogy because uh, with a transistor, uh, if you um, use them together, you can create logic gates, more complex um, features. And then, uh, of course, if you don't want this to take too much room, you use integrated circuits. It's just transistors inside. It's just really small. It's like a bigger brick. And then you can like store um, so the concept of memory and then process this, compare, count, add. So it's like, yeah, a little CPU. And then you can display. So in the end, it's like a little computer, right? And all of this, of course, I want this to be fun. So that was the project. Uh, the complete project, I'm going to talk about that, is to create the Apple One or Apple Two computer um, that's in the process, uh, of course. Um, and my wife didn't want it, like the computer to be in the full uh, room. Uh, that's one guy that created a, this kind of thing, but just with transistors. He didn't cheat, just transistors. But it's huge, of course, makes sense. There's thousands of them if you want to create a small CPU. So I was not going to do that. But if you do this on breadboard, it's a bit easier but you end up with this. Why? Because there's wires everywhere, wires, wires, and it's not really pedagogical, right? Because uh, even me, I don't understand, I wouldn't but understand what I do. But if you don't, if you just create this project and, and do this, you end up with this, because you have wires, it's wires everywhere. So I didn't want this. So I kept searching, and I found this guy, my main inspiration, Ben Eater, um, really great guy, he starts with like LEDs, and he goes from there, uh, simple LEDs and then transistors, and then he, he mixed them, and the, the video quality is good, um, the sound is good, which is almost like impossible to find on the internet, except this guy. Um, and the, the process, pedagogical process, is wonderful because after a few nights, yeah, usually, <laughs> you end up seeing all these like um, videos, and then you end up with a working computer. I was like, that's easy, because when you look at this guy, it's so good, it's like, it's easy, I can do that. He makes it easy. So I started this journey, but I didn't want it to do it like him. That would be, yeah, for me, like, too, like, I thought, simple. So I did something a little bit different so that I, have, that I would have my own problem, own issues that I have to resolve, right? Um, so I wanted to do something like the first microprocessor, the 404. Uh, yeah, it's four bits. Uh, so I say, wow, I'm going to create an AB computer. It's, it's bigger. No, uh, there's <laughs> that was the 404 was, of course. Uh, uh, there was like how much? Like 46 instructions. Uh, we're going to have the add instruction, load instruction. Um, we're going to have the jump maybe zero. You will you'll see that in, in a moment. But the 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 schema, the um, the architecture is still like complex. I'll try to do something even simpler. Okay. So first, we're going to have to talk about bits. Uh, there's going to be bits everywhere. Uh, binary digits, so zeros and ones. Um, the, actually, the real keyboard of a real computer scientist is just zeros, one, and enter. No, that's a joke. But actually, it sort of is. When you, when you do this, at some point, you're just playing with zeros and ones. Um, and then um, we're going to have to count. Uh, so I told the kids, OK, how, m how much can you count with your, your fingers? Like 10, right? Well, let's say that left hand, uh, your left hand is going to be um, just uh, 5. One finger is going to be 5. So you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And then uh, the, you raise one finger on your left is 5. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So you can raise two fingers on the left hand. You've got 10. If you go like this, uh, you can keep going, 11, etc. So you can go to 25 on the left hand. And with a 5 on the right, you happen to count to 30, right? So you can count to 30 without missing any, any number. So it's just uh, convention, right? And imagine, just imagine, um, actually, the creation of Rome. Uh, I would imagine Romulus and Remus like creating Rome and say, "Hey, let's create one, one bar, like two bar, three bar." And the other guy, Remus, says, "Okay, what are you doing there? Oh yeah, great, the V. That's gonna be five. Oh, come on, stop it. Oh yeah, X is gonna be ten. Come on, how many are you? Are you like gonna create that? I guess yeah. It's just, you know, there's not even the zero. We had the Hindus and then the Arabic, like." to create the zeros, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then same again. I, I guess someone said, okay, let's stop there. I mean, we're, we can keep going. Some other, um, um, some, some other like, um, uh, uh, created like other, like they can count to um, five or 15, maybe the Incas, I don't remember. But okay, five, uh, nine, we stop. So then we create this instead of columns. So uh, without got a column, another column, and we start again with zero, one, and get 11, etc. So with computers, you get just, off and on. Well, there can be more, but we can, maybe we'll talk about that with analog computers, but here it's a binary, so zeros and ones, off and on, and then we're stuck. 
So same thing, we apply the same principle, so column, and we start again, zero is one, and then we're stuck again because we, we just have two uh, characters. So yeah, there's a lot of columns. Uh, that's why we have hexadecimal and other ways to like uh, present this. But yeah, computers in the computer is gonna be zeros and ones, so lots of columns, and that's how it's gonna work from right uh, to left. Um, okay, so then I happened to try to, to explain the transistor. That was a bit hard, so I, I, I tried different approach. One approach I tried was uh, E.T. wants to go home. That was my way of saying, well, he really wants to go home. So if there's another way, he's going to choose the way, qu the, the, the quickest uh, to go home, right? So um, E.T. wants to go home, and a transistor, there's just a door and with another entrance uh, to, the, to the lock. And if another E.T. comes and uh, open the lock, then they can go they, they, they both can go through, right? So uh, the, the really interesting thing is when you create a, um, another exit. So then when the door is locked, ET is, um, is stuck, so he takes the exit. Okay, so there's no ET at the entrance, he takes another route. But if uh, an Ill alien comes in, he takes his friend in, he opens the door, and then they can both go through, and he won't choose the other exit. Okay, so that's my way of explaining no electricity at the, at the entrance at the transistor, electricity out, so it does the inverse of what's coming in. So uh, now uh, I had to store, to start in creating this computer, you need to store information. You can't store electricity, well, sort of, but um, like you don't really do that. You're gonna just create loops. Uh, imagine your kids coming back from home, they run over uh, the, um, your house and uh, you wanna tell them something but then uh, you wanna tell them like to like go outside. So they just run around and around, around, you tell them what do we have to, to, to say and then they keep turning and then you open the door and boom, they go outside and they run outside. They keep running, but they keep running outside or inside, it's just a loop, same thing here. Let's use those two transistors, let's connect the output to the input and the opposite, and then let's have the electricity coming in. So um, little alien comes there, opens the door, because the door is closed by default, and he goes uh, home. And the other one sees the door open, he goes through. He doesn't take the other route because it would be harder, so he takes the easiest route. So it's stable, it stays like this. If you look there, with where the little eyes are, you've got uh, one, you've got electricity. If you put a LED in, it's gonna light up, right? Okay, cool. Um, now you just open this, this, this sort of uh, here where the, the eyes were looking. If you open there and you let it go out from there, um, it's gonna take this simplest route and he will close the door. The other one is blocked. He was go the other route, this open the door, and go through. And the other one, now that he has another easiest route, he's gonna take this route. And we end up with a stable state, and if we look, there's no electricity. If you put a LED in, it's not gonna light up. That's it. We've got our first memory component. So let's create that. Uh, I have it right now, but I'm gonna show you a little video. It's, uh, you can see me afterwards to see it live. Uh, so you store one, it's not really storing, you realize it's actually creating a loop, but, uh, and then you let the electricity go out. Uh, it's still a loop. It's just not showing. So it's a zero. We sort of stored one and zero. And just for you to see that I didn't cheat, I just removed the little button. You see the, the light will stay on. So that was not cheating. It was not a push button, right? OK, so we stored something great. And it's super easy. So now if, if we like take them together like, like bricks, Lego bricks, we can create different stuff, you know, like uh, if one and the other is there, so there's gonna be an AND gate, OR gate, et cetera. And I created all of them, the eight gates, and, uh, and then I, I tried to show my kids and show kids that, and that, that worked, that was fun. Um, and I'm not gonna show you this, this demo because we're out of time, but um, uh, there's, each of them is working and you can see them like with a little uh, um, display, and if you remove the little paper, you can see what's inside because I wanted them to, sh to see the real thing, what's really, and it's just like some transistors, there are really few of them, okay? Now, what we wanna do now is create a computer in, in front of you, I wanna do this. And I want to do something like in, in C, that would be int A equals five, int B equals three, int C equals A plus B, and out print C. That would be four lines of code where we're gonna add two numbers, five plus three equals eight. So five is gonna be 101 in binary, three is gonna be one one, and we'll end up with one oh oh oh, okay? Um, good, you're gonna tell me, wait, that's good, but it's gonna just add a computer that has much more than that, really. Well, actually, the first computer, the first CPU, sorry, uh, didn't uh, divide. Division was a bit harder, but you can do it uh, differently. Like, 
a subtraction is just an addition. We just say the first bit uh, says it's a subtraction, and we use the same principle. So subtraction is just an addition with a convention. Cool. Uh, multiplication. Even my kid realized that 5 times 3, it's 5 plus 5 plus 5. Addition. And subtraction, it's uh, 10 divided by 5. It's 10 minus, fi minus 5 minus 5. Zero. So it's subtraction. Subtraction is an addition. So if I'm able to create a CPU that add, I can prove to myself that I can do everything. So that's going to be good enough. So 5 plus 3 equals f. That's what I'm going to do right now. So 1, uh, one plus 1, 1 equals 1, oh, oh, oh. OK. So we're going to use chips. Uh, but before, that was something I, I did, is that every chip I bought, I created it beforehand with transistors. So I didn't cheat. I, I refused to buy a chip uh, if I didn't create it myself on breadboard with transistors. So I created them, it worked, and then I bought the chips. So um, I'm going to use a chip for A register, for the B register, that's going to be the second number. Then I'm going to have a register for the sum and the chip for the add, and I also created the add function. Uh, that, was, that was actually easy. And then an output register to plug in this my little like uh, display, numerical display. Cool. So A, register, uh, sum register, um, ALU, which is just the adder, B register, and, and output. And uh, the A register is going to be connected with wires, uh, lots of wires, to the adder, B register to the adder to add the two numbers. And there's going to be some input for me to be able to push uh, bits. And uh, then uh, it's, there's going to be the register where it's going to push on the register and read. So lots of wires to push data in and data out. Uh, B register, I'm going to push bits to the B register. Uh, for the A sum register, I'm going to get the sum out and put the sum in the output. OK, and then there's a bus that connects all of this. And to explain this, it's like you know, in my house, all the, all the rooms are connected to, um, to the central piece of the house, so um, living room. So if you're in the living room, and you've got two kids that open their door at the same time and talk, you're like, whoa, no, you can talk at the same time. I can't hear what you're saying. Same thing here. That's one with this architecture. There's one drawback. You can't uh, write on this bus, it's just wires. The bus is just wires. You can't write at the same time. So you always have to make sure the way you orchestrate this, uh, only one can talk, can write uh, on this bus. That's it. You have to know that. And otherwise, it works well. And there's going to be a control module. And you have to know that you don't really need that. Uh, actually, the, there is a control unit in, in CPUs because it's much simpler to use. Like uh, I could go do without, but I would need to go with my hands on each chip and activate each chip one by one. That, that, would, be, that would be long, that would be a, a pain. So you create a control where it's just, it's going to be the yellow wires. You'll see that in, in a moment. All the yellow, yellow wires go to the control uh, where all the, all the activation is there. So it's easier to, to use. And there's going to be a clock signal. You, you're going to see that. So actually, let's, uh, let's do that for real. We're going to add 5 plus 3 equals 5 right now. OK, um, so yeah, perfect. Um, now, we're going to, uh, we, we said here in the input, we're going to add, uh, we're going to add 5 plus 3. So I'm going to add, I'm going to select 5. 5 is 101. So 101. So 101, 101 is on the bus. You can see this on the bus. So 101 uh, goes out from there, and it's here on the bus. So now I want it to go to the uh, A register to register this 5, right? So I could activate the chips here to, uh, for the 101 to be stored there. So the yellow wires, I told you, go to the control module. And I've got a little like label here to know which one is which. So A, A in, A register in is this one. So I just activate here. It's just 5 volts. And I'm going to activate all the chips. Uh, the, con the clock signal here activates all the chips at once, but only the ones that are activated uh, react. So here, it's going to be the A register. So if I give a clock signal, all the chips are going to listen, but only the A register will activate. So here we should see, yep, 101. So we stored 101 now on the A register. Good. Let's do this with 3 now. So let's, 3 is 11. So 11 here, it goes on the bus. You can see that. We're going to put this into the B register here. Um, good. So now I need to activate the B register. B register is this control line. It goes back to the to this one and clock signal. Oh, it activates all the chips, but just this one will react. And one one, we have one one here. You have to believe me. Yeah, 
Yeah, you can see it, but it's, yeah. So one, one here, it worked, good. So now what we want, we're gonna cut, uh, turn this chip off because we don't want input anymore. We want the sum. So now we want the sum here, sum register. Good. So now we're gonna uh, activate here the sum register here um, and the sum here, this, those two chips here are summing those two numbers, A and B. Clock signal, here we go. One, oh, oh, oh. we just added five plus three. It works. Now, uh, what we want, last thing I said, I want to display this on my little numerical display. So I'm gonna go back, um, I'm gonna take this eight, uh, sum register, go out from there on the bus, that's gonna be by Edbit bus here, uh, go on the bus and then in the output register, another register, and then there's a little like um, chip here that's gonna take this bits and transform it, just uh, display the, the numerical value there. I already created that by hand with transistors, so I didn't cheat, I bought it when I did it myself. And uh, let's do that, so now let's say, so it's a, a game of doors open and close. Here I'm gonna open the sum register, so sum out, that's this one, this line here, yep, you can see it there, it's on the bus already. So the sum goes out on the bus, and then it's uh, output register in, so it should go there, and it should display here. Yep, okay, the problem is <laughs> you can't see with the, the light, but um, we just like, uh, displayed eight and we like move um, the sum register there so we ended up or four lines of code and there's a reset button where we clear everything. It clears all the chips. Cool. Okay. So now that it worked you uh, you can say okay great but um, you, you did a lot of things there. You, there's your hand, you, you touch everything. It's not a real CPU. You're right, so what did I do there? I just activated like chips um, with like little like, um, uh, with little like buttons, right? So what I did was just push electricity. I just did ones and zeros. So uh, if you see here what I did, I first pushed um, five volts into the A register, so A in. I, let's say one, that's five volts, and then the B register, then we activated the sum register, and then we activated the sum out, and then output in. It's just out and in, and it's just bits. So what if we put all this into uh, memory? So an EEPROM, so that it stays uh, there uh, when, so I don't have to like do it again every time. So let's do that, right? And if we do that, let's say that we put the first instruction, which is actually a load A. It really resembles assembly, right? Let's call it the way we want. It's my computer, I do whatever I want. So load A would be, I would put it in the address zero first, you know, at the beginning of the memory. I don't care. It can be anywhere. I just had to remember it. Load B could be like one. A, uh, add A and B could be like one, one. I don't care. It's, it doesn't even like follows. a, uh, yeah, we don't care. And output can be another like distant memory location. I don't care about the location. Just need to remember where it is. Okay, so let's put this in an EEPROM and let's plug this so that I don't have to activate all the control lines. Okay, shall we? So let's do that. So we do this and here we go. I have to put the number five, right? Then I have to say, okay, address zero. And then I said, I want load A. So f yeah, five appears on the A register up there, good. Now I select three, so the value three, I go to the load B address on the memory and boom, you see I don't need to activate my control lines, good. I started like uh, simplifying this. And now the addition, yep, we've got the sum register with eight value and then we were changing to the output and we've got the output. Okay, cool. Uh, but again, you say, again, I'm still doing the plugging in the values and I'm still addressing, I want this instruction, load A, load B. So, well, same principle. <laughs> Let's put the value in a memory, it's just zeros and one, and I'm just fetching memory. So the first code is gonna be one, that's load A, then load B, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And let's put this in address, but this time, Let's put it at address zero, one, two, three, so that it, it's, it's, it's like, you know, one after the other. Well, this is actually your code. 
this is your assembly code. This is, I put this in RAM. Um, that's a bit long, like uh, when I told you there's zeros and one, like the little keyboard, that's what I did. Like I created a, on breadboard a little like keyboard where I can push zeros and ones on the chip so that I don't have to cheat. So I, I really do this by hand. And, and then let's go. So if you do this, just everything is, is starting at zero. So I push load A. Then I select the second line of code, which is the second memory location, which is load B. Then the third memory location, so the address three, and check, yeah, clock signal. We've got the sum. And then, again, line four of my code, which is output, we've got the output. So now we've got almost everything. The only thing we lack to automate all of this is a counter, right? We count zero, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three. And then there's this clock signal, clock, 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 clock. What do we have to, to replace those two things? First, the counter. I won't do it right now, but you use um, latches and flip-flops. And if you do JK flip-flop, like you, you, know, you build, like I said, with, a, <laughs> like with, a, with the Legos, and then you end up with a counter. If you have two JK flip-flops, one after the other, you create a counter that counts for the instrument. So I did create this from like simple logic gates. And then from for the, we, we are just, we're done, but we, we need this clock signal. So we need something that oscillates. Do we have something electronic that oscillates, right? Do you think it's something? Well, here you go. You've got the 555 timer. 555 timer is, uh, is a chip that is uh, very versatile, that is used by many. And it's great. So you can use that. Actually, Ben Eater used this. But the problem is um, you have to explain it. And he does a great job at that. It's just that for me, that was a bit hard to explain. Because you've got comparators. Um, you've got like here like a transistor. You've got and you need capacitors too. That, that was a bit too complex. So I want something more simple. Do we have something even more simple than that? Something that you might do with your kid, you know, like something that oscillates, maybe with lights and stuff. Well, actually, we do. Look at that. You've got, what do you understand about that, right? No, it's still a bit complex, it's true, but that's what I wanted, just simple components. You've got two transistors, two capacitors, and just four, uh, four, register, uh, four resistors. And they're symmetric. Um, I don't have the time to explain that right now, but uh, actually it's really hard to have someone that explains it's really good because it's, it's a bit hard to explain. But this thing with the capacitors that fills in, that, um, in and out, uh, it oscillates because it goes from like the capacitors like charge and then they discharge and since it's symmetrical it's not perfect so then it goes like it blinks and you've got a little blinker so you can actually my my, my kid did um i helped her like uh, do a little poly scar with this you know with a, a blue and a red light and i said well let's use this can i use this so i tried that I created it, it worked, you have it right there, where you have the, at the bottom, you have here the, the little oscillator, the, the two capacitors, two transistors, really few components, and then it blinks, and then here in the middle, you've got the flip-flops and that are uh, one after the other, and it counts from zero to three and back to zero. So that works, so let, what do, what is, is it gonna happen, is it gonna work if I plug this to the computer we just created? Well, let's see. Now. Zero, yeah, load A, you can see load A, load B, there's gonna be a sum, and the output, done. And you didn't see any hand there. You know, there was no hand, no nothing, no intervention, it finally worked. And the nice thing with this is that it was like uh, modular, so you can explain each step. Um, now, of course, Benitur does the whole thing um, with like much more complex, that is like fully functional, and, and this is just four lines of code. Um, with a fully functional computer, you can do like 16, I think, lines of code. Um, and it's a bit more complex, because here it's just load immediate, for those that know, they, there's, you can't, um, load from memory from this, this one. Uh, but it's enough. And one other thing that I really appreciate is this guy, Ken, Ken Sheriff. This, this is a MOS 6502 die. This guy just cuts open uh, silicon and um, uh, an IC, and he looks into it, and he can like explain to you what's inside. And one crazy thing I realized, this guy says, explain, huh, in, a, in, in this certain like um, uh, CPU, uh, you've got uh, an adder, and there are no like temporary um, uh, there, there's no um, 
uh, sum register. I created sum register, but there is no sum register. And actually, I didn't put the sum register at first because there was no, on, on the scheme as I found, there were no sum register. And the thing looped because if, like, you want to add um, to the accumulator, you want to add a number, but this number is, is connected directly back to itself, the thing just looped and it, it was counting like crazy. And I realized, of course, but you need a, a register in between. So I I realized that, did it myself. I was like, oh, now it's working, okay. But then, when I looked at this guy, I said, well, look, it was not in the documentation, but actually there is a temporary, uh, un -tem temporary uh, register there. So I was like, oh, that's, that's interesting. This guy really goes deep inside. It's, it's impressive. Actually, you realize that a transistor has nothing to do with the transistor we know. Uh, of course, in silicon, it's totally different, but he explains that so well. I, I love this, this kind of explanation, too. So what's next? Well, ne next, my, my, my dream, I, ha I started my life in, in IT with an Apple II, and I, I would dream to create that. Now that I created a small CPU, I can, like, uh, you know, like maybe create one and use uh, the CPU. So now I use a 6502, uh, and now I can create an Apple II computer. So I already created the VGA card, um, already showed that in conferences. It works great. You plug it in there, and boom, you can see the, an image. It's on 100 by 80. It's, it's great. Uh, same thing with the sound card. Sound card is actually super simple. Um, it's, it's, it, it works on one breadboard. That's amazing. And my next would be like, um, um, uh, sort of a network card, not really network, but that would be a serial interface. Uh, and the great thing, the crazy thing that would be like to be able to connect it to, let's say something crazy like Kafka. Um, I love this because that was this morning. There was uh, Danica that presented like Kafka and there was Legos too. So oh, like, great. I'm going to use this for a conference. So imagine connecting this to, uh, to Kafka in the cloud. That would be crazy. Um, something crazy for this project would be great. So that would be the next big step. Uh, I'm Olivier Hubert, and I'm Senior Partner Solution Architect at Avon. And actually, I joined Avon also because I want something simple. I wanted to join the cloud business, and um, which just like can create with this platform, like a Kafka platform, um, Kafka cluster, sorry, uh, open search. Um, we can stream, store, and just a few clicks. It really makes developers' lives easier. And uh, I love that. I love something that's simple and easy to use, and, and the works just works. Um, so thank you so much. You've got my uh, website here, olivierhubert.net, uh, where you have my all my videos. Some are in French, but if you activate the subtitles, uh, you can have it in English. It, it works pretty well. Um, you've got the QR code right there. So if you have any questions. OK, it looks like it was pretty comprehensive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.